Okay, so I, in the katas uh, channel, the, the hashtag katas, I posted a link to a uh, Google Hangout. Uh, I thought we could take a couple minutes and share what we've done on our katas uh, for anybody who would like to share out. Actually, does, is there anybody who wants to share out? Who's got a kata? You guys do? Okay, go for it. Yeah, so please join the Hangout. Um, mute your speaker, but keep your mic on and your camera if you'd like. Joining. And you can share your screen up here. Awesome. So Jeffrey, you going first? Okay, Colleen. So let's see here. So mute your speaker. Can you just do it on your laptop or something? Or plug in your headphones? Yeah, there you go. I like it. Cool. Better? Okay. And now unmute your microphone. Don't think there'll be any feedback. Okay, good. Hey, Colleen, can you say something? Hello? Nope, I don't know if that's working or not. Um, it looks like you're muted. Yeah, sure. I don't know, can I just get your others? Oh, you and your arch. Okay, yep. <laughs> So let's see here. Can I? Okay, I think this, this will work. So it'll it'll be on Jeff's yeah. microphone, but oh, okay. I think we can see your screen, or at least half of your screen. <laughs> um. Oh wait, okay, wait. you're showing. Oh no, I'm showing. No, that, that's that's not a bad thing though. So I think that means your microphone's working, Colleen. Um, can you? Oh no, wait. How did that work before? Okay. No, Jeff, can you unmute again? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, go for it. Or is your camera make this any bigger? Did you make it any bigger? It's not mine or yours. I think your screen is showing. Yeah. It's definitely your screen. <laughs> but yeah, how does that even work? How can I? Okay, wait, I can zoom in. Okay, it's because I still have it set up with an external monitor that I'm Okay, well, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll give that a try, maybe. Uh, meanwhile, can you, like, uh, make the font any bigger? Oh, hey, if you go into, um, well, do you want the two panels side by side? No, I don't need to. I um I do like command scroll, but I don't know what it is on that platform. Okay, so if you can go to view, there's also like presentation mode that might be better. Yeah, go go undo that if you want. Um, okay. So yeah, cancel out of that, and then go view. And there's, yeah, enter presentation mode. Nice. There we go. Okay, diamonds are forever. Oh, goodness. How do I do that? I'm about to get out of presentation mode. That didn't work. Sorry. It's okay. Um, how do you get out of presentation mode? Uh, you get the view, so probably. Oh, if you go to a, is that a code, potentially? Um, 
sorry. It, it, you can go to the other one. one. Okay. You can change windows Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's go down to our actual function. So we, at the top in the main, we just have a lot of uh, checking the input. So we decided to do this right and only let them enter capital letters. We're not going to capitalize it for you. Um, we're not your parents. <laughs> and so we just reject everything that's not a capital letter. Otherwise, we call. So now that's very interesting. Um, uh, and then we call our uh, function. And so in order to make them, uh, all the rows are always the same size. And we start out with, in the sample problem, we have a C. The first character is going to be row 2. And C is the second character. And so we start out with the left and right C scroll at that point. And then each time we do the loop, we change our left C to the second amount of our one. We increment the right C to the second one. And then when we're actually writing out characters to our string builder, um, if they match the letter C, we're going to append the character. Uh, otherwise, we append the space. So we're able to just create each one of these lines. Um, and then once we hit the halfway point, we switch over the modifier. I don't love the name, we just need to make it better. Uh, and so instead of adding plus one to these things, it's going to have the effect of switching the modifier to negative one. It will decrement it, and so we'll start uh, bringing the characters back the other way and bring them back in. And that also flips which way we're incrementing the character because we just we just incremented the character itself to change which character is incremented. So at the halfway point, it starts decrementing that. Yep. Nice. Let's see. And you also had some tests for this, also. Yeah. You said it was in code. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have as many tests as we did. Um, we, kind of, we, we changed up our sort of internal algorithm a bunch of times. Because uh, we were doing, we had an initial plan to build this string like three different more loops. And that was just really ugly. So we decided not to do it. And then we tried, we were doing something else, which was similar to that. And we kind of stumbled on the sort of the left and right thing. Uh, it was not a good test for the development. We should have done more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice, excellent, okay. Yeah, no, that's cool. Okay, great. Any uh, questions or observations for Jeff and Colleen? Um, I guess for a question like this, uh, for a problem like this, figuring out what tests kind of sample the whole space of the problem well, it seems like A would be a good edge case. Mm. But then aside from that, I can't think of any other real edge cases. Yeah, A definitely does seem degenerative, right? Yeah. There's only one letter and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, because right now we only really have one, one test. So we have three. <laughs> cool. Um, I, I noticed that using the assert keyword here, did any of your tests actually fail? Oh, so that's actually another thing we found out. We're having issues getting the nice data. Oh, with, with Hamcrest? Oh, right, yeah. That's that's a method that you need to import, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice, okay, great. Any questions for these guys, these folks? Awesome. Very nice. Awesome. Great. Okay. Who is uh, who's next? Let's see here. Joe? Joseph? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's see here. If you can put your turn on your mic, unmute yourself rather. Yep. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, I'll just do some golf commentary then. So you can hear a drop of break. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Uh, I won't see it, so then I see are you oh, this is sharing, so why is oh there it is now. I see. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um so we kind of went with more of a middle out approach. Um so we started with the last so the letter they gave us was what we kind of started with with our for loop. And then we decremented how many spaces we needed between the two letters until we kind of ran out of spaces and then we added the A at the bottom. Um, so we used a string builder, and we could we inserted to the back and the front of it. So we kind of used it like a double-sided queue. Um, and then our test was um, IntelliJ is really pretty cool when you run the unit tests. And if you so we kind of worked backwards from the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so we ran it, and then we just copied it from the output. <laughs> which, made ah, lot, okay. which made it a lot faster than, <laughs> than having to type it all out. So that was kind of a cool feature. But yeah, that was our solution. So then you didn't do test driven. You basically, hey, you figured out the algorithm. You're, right. Well, because it's pretty all. straightforward. You can tell if it's working or not. Yeah. So yeah, we kind of worked backwards. Um. <laughs> nice. So nothing wrong with that because you got a good answer. And you got a, uh, a test so that if you do any refactoring or whatever, you'll know whether or not it still works. Yeah. Cool. So can you go back to your implementation again? Yeah. So we ended up doing a lot of math, which wow. could be refactored yeah, yeah. a lot nicer. But a lot of it's really just based on just ASCII characters. I mean, probably, I don't know. Which one's know. 91? 91 is just greater than Z, capital Z. Ah, OK. Uh, so yeah, it's, this is cap, so this was capital Z, and this was capital A. Um, then it would make a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, we kind of built it line by line, as opposed to character by character. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Very nice. Okay. Any questions for is Joe or Joseph? Uh, Joe. Joe, Joe, I don't know about that. Yeah. Any questions for Joe? No? Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks. Anybody else want to share? No, that's okay. Yeah. Super cool, as always. Um, how did uh, tonight's experience compare to last week for those of you who were here last week? What was, what was the same? What were some of the things where it's like, okay, yep, I, I learned the same thing, I experienced the same thing as I did last week? Blocked out last week. Distant memory. It's so much Project 2 between then and now. That's fine. Anything different? Anything stand out? Was it easier this week, harder this week? A lot more back and forth this week. Okay. So then, yeah, more communicating, more, uh, more sharing. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll have another opportunity week after next to, uh, to pair program again. Okay. So then, uh, yeah, that, that kata was definitely uh, more difficult. I was doing it too. Um, and, uh, my implementation, I got, I got letter C to work. I was so proud of myself. Then I realized that letter B is broken. So uh, I still have a little bit more work to do there. But um, yeah, I did it test driven. Um, I'm, I can't do math this time of night. And so it was like literally, it's like, okay, I need to, you know, I, I had like methods for like get in external and get uh, in, internal. It's funny because I recorded it all, and if you're really bored, you can watch it. But it's like, oh, where do I need the absolute value in here? I, I, I like your, 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 you all did like this nice iterative way of doing it. I sort of broke it down and decomposed it in a certain way, and I don't know. It's 
it mostly works. It works for C, it doesn't work for B yet. So anyway, so that was fun. That's all up on GitHub. Okay. And now probably the part that everybody's been waiting for, project four. Okay. So um, when I was uh, asked to teach this course in the winter, I was super excited because, A, I got this room. We can do pair programming. We're doing mod programming in the future. I'm really excited about that. But then I realized, like, wow, it's 11 weeks. I haven't taught an 11-week version of this course in, like, over a decade. Um, and so I'm like, wow, this is really cool. What the hell am I going to do for three extra weeks? So I was, like, going through the old assignments and everything that, that, that I used to do, um, and I'm like, well, what still makes sense? And I'm like, well, could we do one with that kind of networking? I don't know. I said, you know what? Let's do the, the XML one. So uh, I think everybody here knows what XML is. You've seen it like your palm.xml and other configurations. And you'll see XML again in Android because there'll be a lot of, uh, when you define a lot of your layouts, it'll be done or it can be done using XML. Um, but there's using XML and then there's writing code against XML. And that's what Project 4 is all about. So um, in projects one, two, and three, you've been building up your airline application. In project two, you added uh, a, uh, the ability to read and write the airline as a text, in a, in a text uh, format of your design. Right? And so part of the assignment was designing the format and making sure that you have a parser and a, uh, and, and a dumper that can, can handle that format. Well, in Project 4, we're all going to be using the same format. That same format is XML. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, you'll, more so than probably the other products to date, you'll really need to go and watch the, the, the lecture on XML to really understand what things like a DTD and the DOM API are all about. But basically what the DTD uh, does is it specifies, here's a format of the XML file. And then there is a Java API, standard Java API called a document object model, or that implements a job document object model um, that you'll use to manipulate your XML in Java. So for project four, uh, you'll continue to add, you'll add some new functionality to your airline application. Uh, you'll add a new kind of airline dumper called XML dumper, which uh, takes an airline and converts it into an XML file that conforms to that DTD. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, the DTD, uh, even though you can like download it and look at it and everything like that, when you reference it in your program, you should load it from a jar file, and I have a XML helper class that'll let you do that. Uh, that'll make sure all that stuff works. So you have an XML dumper that takes an airline and writes it to, uh, to XML, to an XML file. And then you have an XML parser that implements the airline parser interface, which reads the contents of an XML file uh, that conforms to that DTD and creates an airline from its contents. And then you also uh, have a, a class called converter, which has a main method uh, that converts, uh, that, that basically takes a text file from your project to format and then converts it into uh, an XML file. This should be only a couple lines of code if you sort of understood all the pieces, parts, and how to put them together again. And basically, the, uh, the, the main method for converter takes two arguments. The first one is a text file. The second one is an XML file. I'm not going to you know, do, do limited. Uh, well, actually, the command line is pretty straightforward, so you don't need to verify very much on the command line. So the converter is uh, a new thing. And then you've got your main program, so your project four. So this has pro the, the functionality of all the previous projects plus the ability to read and write XML files. So same sort of pattern that we've seen before. You create a new flight in an airline, but that airline now can come from an XML file, a text file, and you still have the pretty printing from, uh, from project three. Uh, note that's an error to specify both text file and XML file. So you either have a text file or you have an XML file. You don't have both. Um, the usual caveats around exiting gracefully. Uh, so if like your command line is, uh, is not correct. Uh, if you have an XML file that does not conform to the document type definition. Uh, and then again, uh, just like last time, if you don't have a, uh, if the airport uh, code is not known. So I mean, the whole idea here is that uh, where in project two, I couldn't, you know, each one of your file formats was unique. I, and so you couldn't share files with each other. 
One of the things that XML provides is the ability to uh, to share files from different programs because everybody conforms to the uh, to the same format. So even though you might model things differently, obviously you're using different classes inside your your program. The data that you exchange all has the same format, so you should be able to exchange data with each other. Now it was funny when I dusted off this project. It's like, wow, you know, XML parsing has come a, a, a ways. Um, and so then if you go and Google, hey, how do I parse uh, XML in, uh, in, in, in Java, you'll find that there is this uh, set of tools called Jaxby, uh, which is a little bit more modern than, uh, th than DOM and not as clunky as things like uh, the SACS API, which you can learn about in the, in the lecture. Um, you can use Jaxby for this project if you'd like. I don't know if you can get it to work, though. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I myself am not familiar enough with it to know whether or not you can uh, use it with the, uh, with the DTD that I provide. Um, if you want to try it, it might seem easier. Uh, maybe it will be. I don't know. Um, but I do recommend that uh, if you're maybe feeling a little behind or um, are worried about maybe uh, wasting a lot of time on something that doesn't work, stick with the, the DOM API that you learn about in the, uh, in the lecture. Um, and uh, I have, you know, experienced a lot of confidence that you can definitely get it to work with that. But you can try Jaxby if you want. This project is due, uh, let's see, on the 19th, which is three weeks from now. Any questions about the XML? Yes, Jeff. Oh, it doesn't? No, it probably doesn't. Okay. No, that's probably because my, can you, uh, I, I create a Project 4 channel in Slack. Can you please uh, mention that there and I will fix that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. You, you can go look in GitHub and the airline.dtd is there. You might actually be able to reference it in your, I reference it in the IntelliJ project. Let's go find out. Uh, no, actually probably not that one. In... In this one, can I open up airline.dtd? Oh, I can. Cool. Yep. So you can't see it in IntelliJ, but I'll make it. Uh, I'll fix that link too. You won't be downloading it. For, your program won't download it from that link, even though it might look that way. It'll actually go and look for it in the jar. Okay. Good. Good question there. Anything else on the XML project, Project 4? Okay. So, finally, a uh, program note. Next week, there is no class. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm at a conference. I'm not going to be able to uh, attend. Um, and so then, uh, between now and the next class, uh, is a chance for you to sort of catch up. The idea here is that uh, when, we sort of, when we look at the arc of the course, where the, sort of the first half, third, is, uh, is, is sort of preparing and working for the command line. Um, you've got three projects in play. You've got the, 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 the cones. There's plenty of stuff to keep you busy for the, the, next, the next two weeks. Um, and so then uh, I will try to be as available as I can between now and then um, to answer your questions. But as always, be sure to start things early because it's probably a little bit more challenging than you thought. And then uh, after a uh, week after next, when we come back, we will uh, we'll dive into some of the more uh, advanced and some of the more, I hope, interesting stuff, uh, which is uh, doing, uh, doing web programming, writing a REST API, doing client-server stuff. And uh, then uh, after that, we will end the, end, end the course in the last few weeks of it uh, working on Android. So uh, we've got uh, sort of all of the, the table stakes stuff out of the way now. You've uh, seen how to work with the command line. You're learning about working with other uh, Java APIs. Um, and then we'll do some uh, distributed programming with, uh, with multiple uh, processes. And then we'll do, be doing some UI programming. So that's it for the remainder of the course. Okay. Anything else before we adjourn? Thank you very much uh, for staying tonight. Thank you for uh, listening at home. Um, I will see you in two weeks. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me on Slack in the meantime. Uh, and uh, have a good time. I'll see you later.